actually very strange that I've been sitting around this table many times, but not on one side with an audience on the other side. So it's um, I'm a bit apprehensive knowing the um, well-informed audience that the Institute draws. It's been a privilege for me to be a member of the Institute, and um, I think that somehow uh, the Institute and its members have contributed to who I am and what I am today, uh, that is... Uh, a citizen of Europe and uh, also a member of the French Parliament. Um, it's always important, of course, to remember where one is coming from to know where one is going. Um, I would like to thank the Institute for organizing this event, for I believe that um, the Republic, the, the, sorry, <laughs> the primaries, the American primaries dominate the media coverage uh, in Ireland. And uh, I believe that the result of the French election is as important, uh, if not more, than the nomination of the American Republican candidate um, because of the impact it will have on Ireland in the same way as the recent changes in government in Greece, Italy, Portugal, the UK, Spain and Ireland, of course, have had a direct influence on European affairs and therefore on all of us who belong to this large European family. The same financial and economic crisis are striking with the same social implications throughout Europe. A rise in unemployment, austerity plans being imposed with cuts in social benefit and a need for increased productivity and efficiency. Recession hit everywhere, the evident domination of the markets and the central decisive role of the notation agencies. In most European countries, we observe the same response, which may have something to do with the fact that the majority of countries have elected conservative right-wing governments. I believe that this is one of the key reasons why this presidential election in France is so important, not just for its people, but also because it may start, or it may be the start, of a reversal of the current trend of a conservative, liberal answer to the current crisis. But I may be, of course, expressing a, a private, private wish here. The French and German governments have been criticized for being too slow to respond to the crisis with too little too late. They have not showed a great sense of solidarity, but have reacted when their own interests were at stake. I realize and accept that my analysis is biased as I'm fully involved in the campaign of one of the candidates with whom I share a different vision of the way our society could be run. A controversy ran through the French press recently on a coalition of conservative leaders who are refusing to meet François Hollande. Whether this is true or not is not really important. It is simply another proof of the European dimension of this election. It is the first time that the German leader uh, declares her support for French candidates. It is also true that it is the first time that the French president and the German chancellor belong to the same party in Europe. If you go back times, you had Mitterrand and Kohl, you had Chirac and uh, Schröder and Valérie uh, and Schmidt, so they actually belong to opposite uh, parties, if you like. Anyway, trends, there was a right wing and left wing each time. Um, this help was dropped by the UMP, which is President Sarkozy's uh, party, as they were not sure of the positive outcome of the declared support for their candidate and uh, preferred to forget it. I would like to mention three points that may be of interest uh, to Ireland in this campaign. The most immediate impact on Ireland, if François Hollande is elected, is on the fiscal treaty. He has promised to renegotiate the treaty to add clauses of growth and austerity. A modified text will benefit Ireland. To me, it is economic suicide to sanction countries that are already struggling. While everybody agrees that public debt must be reduced Introducing harsher measures of austerity will simply continue the negative cycle. If François Hollande wins and demands a rewrite, it will affect the timing of the Irish referendum scheduled for May or, I heard last night, maybe June. It will be unthinkable to vote on a text that then will be modified. The candidate is fully aware that, if elected, it will be isolated to start with. 
and he acknowledged it during his speech at the Siècle d'Hiver last Saturday when he gathered around him uh, European progressive leaders for a meeting called the Renaissance for Europe towards a common progressive vision. He will be isolated at the level of heads of state who belong to the EPP, for the majority of them. However, if we take a rapid tour around Europe, we realize that Spain has already announced that it will be unable to fulfill the clauses. <coughs> Germany's growth has been readjusted. Mario Monti himself has, has declared that growth is missing in the text. The IMF and the United States judged the pact short-sighted. One can imagine that in May, the fiscal treaty may not have the support it initially had. In any case, I happen to know the candidate, and I can assure you that he is a tenacious negotiator. Ten years as leader of the Socialist Party demands this, of course. I have attended a large number of rallies, and some of the witnesses he was accused to possess at the time of the Socialist primary and are proving to be strengths. He is rational, stable, and does not bring everything back to himself. He has certainly grown in assurance, and during the presentation of his program on defense, he showed that he had taken the full dimension of the role of president and even joked about the fact that he will not need months to grow into it. Unfortunately, a pattern has, that has emerged in this campaign is the personal attacks, but I will come back to this later. Nicolas Sarkozy has announced a renegotiation of Schengen in line with his hardening line on immigration, but obviously he supports the treaty as he drafted it with Angela Merkel. The second point of interest for Ireland is about corporate tax. None of the candidates have talked about harmonization at European level in the campaign so far, but France had an interesting debate on the taxation of large companies, which was triggered by this wish, which uh, starting in about the 1990s and resurfaces regularly. Um, and the French discovered that companies such as Total, for instance, pay 8% tax when the average small and medium-sized company pays 33%. So Hollande wants higher taxes on big companies and the super-rich in France. Super-rich meaning earning over a million a year. Nicolas Sarkozy proposes a Small Business Act that will reverse a number, uh, not reverse, but reserve a number of public works to small and me medium-sized companies. But this is not a novel proposal, as it dates back to 1993. It was actually proposed by Gigu at the time. Um, however, it was never implemented, and maybe if he is re-elected. A third point of interest for Ireland is the European defence policy, which was a point of contention during the Lisbon treaty campaign here in Ireland. Both candidates defend France's nuclear deterrent policy and the UN Security Council veto. <coughs> Hollande wants to relaunch the Saint-Malo process started with the British. He wants to strengthen the Franco-German relationship and involve the Belgians, Spaniards, Italians and the Poles who are interested in a closer cooperation. As most countries are cutting their defence budgets, he is talking about putting military equipment together and has put a particular emphasis on the consolidation of a European technological and industrial base, good for jobs and research as the main industrial groups have to be based in Europe. This will benefit a large number of small and medium-sized companies. Nicolas Sarkozy has not so far made a major speech on defence as the current, uh, as is the current chef des armées, of course, but he makes speeches at various military events, which I suppose can count as being part of his program. Of course, he's, trained, he's very keen to strengthen the link with Germany, but uh, again, no major announcement so far. I'd like now to move to the campaign itself. At the start of it, the Eurozone debt crisis, with the loss of France triple A's, was worrying the electorate who had witnessed what happened in Greece, Spain, and of course, Ireland. But the focus moved rapidly to issues closer to people's immediate concerns, such as the cost of living, housing, and unemployment. The debates today are less technical when they don't deal with financial or budgetary issues. 
But one can regret that international, international affairs remain absent apart from the announcement made by François Hollande of the withdrawal of French troops in Afghanistan a year earlier than planned with the Allies. The French electorate has now realized that France needs to negotiate at every level and does not dictate its policies any longer. The rejoining of NATO, military command, has been met with mixed feelings in France because of the rushed way, I suppose, it was carried out and the lack of consultation at the time. On the one hand, a sense of loss of France's freedom of speech but with the engagement in Libya, the realization that France's military capacity is now so limited that it can only be part of a larger force in order to be efficient. It is possibly in terms of foreign affairs that the personality and style of the candidates will come to the forefront. Micromanagement of French diplomacy from the Elysee Palace that would go back to the diplomats uh, with Hollande and close ties with the US that may be more distant with Hollande, who declared recently, France will remain, will remain a reliable ally of the United States. Nevertheless, ally does not mean aligned. Hollande appears to be more focused on Europe and France's partners, when Nicolas Sarkozy is keen to tighten the relationship with the US. This is less obvious, of course, with uh, Obama than it was with Bush. Of course, Nicolas Sarkozy has showed uh, also a keen interest on Europe, and it was, I think it's been a growing one through his, his engagement uh, to deal with the financial crisis. I will end with a few words about the candidates. Um, I've only mentioned two. There are ten of them, as uh, declared by uh, Jean-Louis Debré this morning. Uh, Corinne Lepage was... Uh, um, was running for the, the Green, well, representing a Green Party, was unable to gather the 500 signatures, and therefore there's only 10 of them. But apart from Nicolas Sarkozy and François Hollande, the media have really followed three other candidates uh, Marine Le Pen, who is representing the extreme right, François Bayrou, who represents the centre, and Jean Luc Mélenchon, who represents the extreme left, but has gathered the communists and everybody on, on the left of the left. And all of them are credited uh, over 10% uh, in the polls. Now, the late, latest polls show that Nicolas Sarkozy now has overtaken, but there is kind of a bit of a dilemma there, depending on who is showing and presenting the poll, whether it's the Figaro or Le Monde. They don't, but anyway, those two candidates now are at about 27%. However, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy is credited at 46% in the second round against 54 for François Hollande. Um, the National Front vote, which helped Nicolas Sarkozy's election in 2007, doesn't appear to transfer very well to him this time. Thus, maybe the debate on halal meat and all of these things about immigration and, and so on in order to <coughs> woo the National Front vote. Um, from the centre, only about 30% of Bayrou's vote will transfer to uh, Nicolas Sarkozy. Uh, again, the change of tone in Nicolas Sarkozy's address to François Bayrou is now calling him un grand homme d'État, un grand homme politique. On the left, the votes appear to transfer well to uh, François Hollande. And uh, last Saturday, um, Jean-Luc Mélenchon gathered uh, 100,000 people at the Bastille and he created the biggest political popular event, if you like, <coughs> of the campaign. Uh, the two main candidates, um, François Hollande and, and Nicolas Sarkozy, managed to draw about 60,000 people in their biggest rally. Now, I mean, but they're doing a whole lot of others as well, so it's 20,000 in the next one and 30,000 and so on. Now, Jean-Luc Mélenchon uh, is, I think, planning two others. Uh, and uh, it would be a sign to see that he's actually pulling these people not in, in the big hall, but you know, coming in the street and the Bastille, of course, uh, was very symbolic. Now, Eva Jodi uh, for the Greens remain at 2.5%. Uh, this is very much uh, away and far from the um, score that was reached in the regional and European elections by Europe Ecologie Les Verts. 
Well, it's true that economic issues are dominating the debate at the expense of maybe environmental ones, and that can be regretted, but that's the way it is. And this leads me to the final point on the candidates. Um, the personality of the candidates has never counted so much as in this election, nor have their personal qualities, strengths and weaknesses been analysed and presented and even referred to in speeches. There seems to be no holding back at this point in the campaign uh, in terms of a language which is becoming more and more violent. Candidates are not afraid to call each other liars. Um, and at the same time, there's a kind of an American style, especially in the rallies, which a lot of them still favor and uh, want to have. Um, you know, you have the little flags, people are prompted to applaud and, you know, react at certain times. And uh, one has realized that, of course, the media, the presence of the media has a lot to do with that, that, you know, apart from the 60,000 who are actually in the hall, the others are watching on YouTube and, and, and so on. And um, all the candidates are very, very much involved on, kind of on the net, um, putting a lot of, I suppose, emphasis on the presence in the media as well. Um, now, Nicolas Sarkozy has been has started his campaign on the 15th, well, officially, <laughs> on the 15th of uh, February. And uh, he's, a, he's an excellent debater, and uh, the media environment really suits him, I think. He's, he's fairly aggressive, fairly persuasive, and that may explain how he has caught up with François Hollande. But of course, François Hollande was on his own for a very long time, so it was easy to be ahead of everybody, um, as he was going to be at the monopole of, of, of the, the media uh, coverage to himself. Um, but. Uh, at the same time, Nicolas Sarkozy has been in the news nearly every day for the past five years. So now you have a candidate who is unknown, and that was he has been criticised. You know, it's François Hollande. We don't know him. We don't actually know. Well, he was he was the leader of the opposition for a very long time, and of course, in that didn't or was unable to build a kind of you know a personality for himself that we will really known at the on the uh, internationally anyway. Now, the polls may change slightly as from today or tomorrow, as uh, Dahi uh, said, uh, unfortunately, because of these awful killings in, in Toulouse, uh, the campaign has actually been put to a hold until tomorrow evening um, in respect to the, uh, those poor people who were killed um, yesterday. Uh, but from now on, or from today anyway, all the candidates will have equal time in the media and that may help, and will certainly help, François Bayrou, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, and maybe Marine Le Pen a little bit, uh, to continue making gains at the expense of the leading candidates. Now, of course, that may not be very helpful to either Nicolas Sarkozy or François Hollande, because one will be trying to catch the votes on the extreme right, that's for Nicolas Sarkozy, and the centre, as he has no reserve whatsoever in the right. And, of course, François Hollande will be looking on his left and also to the centre in order to go to the 54% that he's credited to, um, to have at the moment. So it's going to be a rather difficult exercise for them, um, as, of course, either the, to try to reconcile the extreme right or the extreme left with the centre is not exactly easy. Now, um, there's still a month to go. As I said, it's, uh, it's a very, very hard campaign which is being fought at all levels. Uh, media coverage, I know that François Hollande um, has decided to do this door-to-door -door campaign, which is not something that's normally done in France. Uh, there will be debates on television, and um, these might be kind of turning points again. One has to remember that sometimes there's just one sentence. A candidate can make the most wonderful speeches throughout the campaign, and then there will be this unfortunate sentence, you know, that's going to go around the net and on Twitter and so on, that will kill months of hard work. So one has to wait. Uh, there's still, as I say, four weeks to go, and um, we will see. I think it's wait and see at this point. Thank you. Thanks, Elaine.